Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a bunch of first impressions that I got from Ulta. I really don't have one set category like high-end or drugstore. It's kind of a mixture of both. So we're gonna go ahead and delve into this. And if you wanna see what my thoughts are at the end of this video, then just keep watching. All right guys, let's go ahead and get started. I am gonna start off with the Wet n Wild Prime Focus Primer Serum. This is their hydrating serum. I have been testing this out and I really do like it. I did a video here recently using this. It has that hydrating feeling when you put it on, but as you rub it in, it has like that tackiness to it. It's not super tacky like the Milk Makeup Primer or the Urban Decay Grip Primer, but it still has a little bit of tackiness to it, so my foundation goes on really well with this. For the center of my face, I'm going in with this e.l.f. Matte Putty Primer. I'm gonna press that into the skin. All right, while that's all setting into the skin, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my eyes. I am going in with this e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer, and this is in the shade Rose. This actually has been working really well for my eyeshadow. It goes on really easily. It doesn't like skip or feel like I'm pulling on my eyelids. Really been liking it. So for eyeshadow today, I'm gonna go in with the Sugar Rush by Tarte. It's the BU eyeshadow palette. This is the packaging here. I purchased this at Ulta. It is actually supposed to be like a sister brand for Tarte or like a baby sister brand for Tarte because it looks like it's more geared towards younger skin. But I saw this palette and I could not pass it up. It is the cutest packaging. It's like honeycomb inside. I'm gonna open the top so you guys can see a little bit better. These are the shades right here. Very beautiful, very pigmented as far as I know when I swatch them. But today we're gonna try it on the eyes to see if that pigmentation is still there. On the back it also has like the honeycomb sticker and all the shade names are on the back. So let's go ahead and try that today. I'm gonna go in with the Sonia G Blender Pro. I wanna go ahead and set that e.l.f. primer. So I'm actually gonna go in with this shade right here called Be The Change. It's starting to pour rain outside. It's so gloomy today. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go in. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with this shade called Be Loving. And I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to go into the crease with that. Kind of warm up that crease. This is a really pretty like peach shade. Nice transition color too. Next I'm going to go into this shade right here. And I'm using a Wayne Goss 04 brush. I'm just going into the crease with that. I'm gonna take my Wayne Goss number seven brush. I'm gonna go into that shade right there. And I'm gonna place that all over the lid. These are really nicely pigmented. These shimmers are coming off so beautiful. Kind of like a smoky taupe shade. I'm gonna take my Wayne Goss number six brush. I wanna go into this shade right here, which is a darker shade. And I want to place that into the crease and just like on the edge. So when I go up into the crease, I'm not going in all the way, I'm just only coming in halfway. But I am pressing that shade on the outer corner just to deepen it up. So I'm going to take the other side of the Wayne Goss number no. 7 brush and I'm going to go into this shade right here. It's a lighter shade. I'm going to place that just on the center of my lid. Just kind of highlight that area. I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to take this shade right here at the bottom and I'm going to use that as my brow bone shade. It's just a nice soft matte shade, doesn't have any shimmer to it. I am gonna go back in with my Sonia G and I'm just going to brush those outer edges out. I'm not gonna try to get into my brow bone shade, I'm just trying to smooth everything out. I don't really see much fallout, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the edge here. There was hardly any fallout here, there was a little bit on the edge, but nothing that a makeup wipe can't clean up or a Q-tip. I'm gonna go in with my Smashbox Photo Finish Hydration Primer for my under eyes. 
So I just go in there and gently rub it with my finger. I don't go in too harsh. You don't want to pull that skin there. I'm going to go in with this Revolution Conceal and Fix Ultimate Coverage Concealer in Tan. This is supposed to help conceal those areas where I have like hyperpigmentation or even dark circles. I did get the shade Tan only because I wanted to use this for my hyperpigmentation more so than anything. So I only got it for that. I did swatch this in store and it's very, very creamy and thick. It comes in a pot like this and then it has a screw off top and then the products inside. There is a seal there, so I'm gonna take that off. So that is the product there, and that is the shade Tan. So what I'm gonna use with the Conceal and Fix is this Chic Pro Spot Concealer Brush. I actually bought this at Five Below. I had never gone into a Five Below store till the other day, and the reason why I went in there is because one of my subscribers had told me that she got the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy Foundation in Five Below. I really hadn't seen one over here by me, but then when I saw it the other day, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go in there and check it out, see what they have. I did purchase some items from Wet n Wild there. They did have the Dewy Photo Focus Foundation, but unfortunately they only had like six shades. They didn't have much at my store. But anyway, I saw these brushes and they looked pretty nice. And so I thought, you know what? Let me check these out. I picked this one up and let me get the other one so I can show you. So I picked this one up. This is the spot concealer brush. And then I picked up the eyeshadow brush, which looks like this. And so I didn't use this one today, but I will be using it soon in another video. But I thought, why not use this one with this conceal and fix just to see how it does. So let me go ahead and uh, dip that in there and then I'm going to just cover up those areas where I have the hyperpigmentation and honestly I probably could do this after the foundation but I just want to see how it covers up under the foundation so I'm just going to spread this all around very gently it is covering up the hyperpigmentation I mean really well like there's no gray beneath it normally if I put something on that is too light like this there's a lot of gray showing behind it but this looks really good I'm gonna put a little bit more on this side it's like I told you guys it is very thick it's very creamy so a little goes a long way with this stuff you don't need a lot so I am gonna go in with the photo focus foundation the dewy one love this stuff so i'm going to use this today on top of this and this also works really well with the primer that i put on i'm just going to layer it on top and the shade i'm using is desert beige and i'm going in with my sponge okay now by looking at it it looks like you can see a little bit of the hyperpigmentation. Not much, but just very little. Now with my Tarte Shape Tape, you can't see that hyperpigmentation at all. It covers it up super nicely. Okay, so I'm not gonna go in with another layer of foundation because I think it looks really good. The Conceal and Fix didn't stay full coverage on my face. It looks like maybe the product mixed in with it and it just kind of shows my hyperpigmentation. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and try to use just a little bit of this on top and then go in with my sponge just to see if it'll cover up a little bit more instead of putting another layer of foundation on. Okay, so I'm just going to tap a little bit. So now I'm going to use my sponge to actually blend that out. Normally I use my sponge with my Tarte Shape Tape and it works really well. I don't go in real hard, I actually just kind of tap it just to get that blended. Guys, I think that looks pretty good. It doesn't work as good as my Tarte Shape Tape, but it looks really good on my skin. It kind of gave like that little bit of highlight too to my face. Not like a highlighter, but you know, just that brightness. All right, so I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna be wearing this for like maybe three or four hours. 
So I'll be able to tell if it's gonna break up. Um, it's kind of later in the day, it's like almost 4.30. So I'm not gonna be wearing this like all day long, but this is more of a first impressions video. Yeah, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. I am gonna go in with my concealer. I'm going in with the NYX Born to Glow Concealer. I have mentioned this in one of my videos as well. I have been loving this concealer. It's like one of the best at the drugstore right now. It kind of reminds me of the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer. That stuff is really good. It's very full coverage, and this one is pretty much the same. And it hydrates my under eyes, which I love. Look how nicely it brightens up the under eye. And to me, it has a really nice full coverage. So to set my face, I'm gonna go in with my YSL powder. I've had this for a while, so this is like nothing new. But I love this powder with this foundation. I also love the Chanel powder with this foundation. So before we get into anything else, I'm going to go in with this Tarte Big Ego Frame Worker Brow Pomade. And this is the inside here. This is the actual cap. I swatched it in store just a little bit just to see the creaminess and it was nice and creamy but not too creamy. And so what I'm going to use today is the Anastasia number 12 brush and I'm going to use that to actually apply this on my eyebrows. So I'm going to try to do one brow and then off camera I'm going to do the other one. And I'm going to start with this one first because I'm better at this one but this one over here always gives me problems. We're going to try out the easy brow first. So I've already brushed through them. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. What shade did I get? I got the shade dark brown for medium and dark brown hair. So far so good. I'm just taking whatever excess that I have on the brush and using it for the front of the brow so the front of the brow doesn't look too dark or too harsh. All right, I think that went on really nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other brow off camera and I'll be right back. All right guys, I'm back. Both brows are done. So let's go ahead and get into the other products that I'm gonna put on my face today. One of them is going to be the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance Powder. I actually heard about this on Tati's channel. She said she likes to use this on her face and when she goes to get her makeup done, that she actually brings this with her and asks her makeup artist to actually add this to her face. So I wanted to try it because I wanted to know what the big deal about it was. So I got the same shade as she did. It is the Creamy Natural. This is what the outside packaging looks like. This is what the inside shade looks like. It is in Creamy Natural. And I'm going to get a brush. I'm gonna use a Wayne Goss number two brush and I'm just gonna dip it into the powder. And I'm just going to use it just in those areas where I want a little bit more highlight to my face. And then I'll set my concealer. So that's what the powder looks like. Close up it looks a little bit drying, but I'm gonna go ahead and set my face after I'm done with my makeup to see if that kind of melts into the skin. So let me go ahead and set my under eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Laura Mercier blurring powder for the under eyes. And I'm gonna use that same brush. By the way, I wiped this brush off with a towel. So I got some of the excess off before I went into that Laura Mercier. So I got some new Essence palettes. I have the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder palette and these are the shades here. I also picked up the new Essence Pure Nude Highlighter palette. This one is in Highlighter Reload. It's in lighter shades. And then I picked up the Pure Nude Sun Lighter palette and this one is in Sun Lighter Reload. These are more of a darker shade. So I'm gonna use these today. I don't know which one I'm gonna go in with first. I know I'm gonna use the bronzing palette before the highlighting palette, but I'm not sure which highlighter palette I'm gonna use today. Okay, so these are the shades up close, and they look like beautiful bronzing shades. Um, I will swatch these for you guys so you can see the shade range. So those are the shades there. The shade range seems pretty nice. I think this shade here is gonna be a little bit too dark for me, 
and this one might be a little bit too dark for me. So these are some darker shades here, which I think would look beautiful on darker skin tones. So I'm just gonna go in with the lighter shade here. I'm gonna use the Flower Blush Precision Brush. I think this is more for blush, but I'm gonna use it for contouring today. So this is the shape of the brush. It's really nice and soft and it's tapered. I'm gonna go into that medium shade there. It is powdery. I'm gonna do a little bit of contour, not anything too crazy. That is a pretty bronzy shade. It's nicely pigmented. Ooh, I love it, I love that. I'm gonna go ahead and put some on my forehead. This brush helps contour those cheeks, but it also helps blend out the product. See that? That's really pretty. I kind of want to use this like my Jouer bronzing powder, the duo one that I have. So I'm going to go in with the lighter shade and I'm going to go on top of that shade just to kind of blend it. And then I'm going to take this darker shade here and I'm just going to use the tip of my brush. I'm going to go on my chin and I'll bring it down. Okay, that looks really nice. So now I'm wondering what highlighter palette I should go into. I really like this one, but the shades in here are really dark, but I think they would look really good as like a shimmer blush. So I'm not gonna use this one. I am gonna go in with this one, which is the lighter shades. And let me take off this film so you guys can see the true shades. These are the shades right here. You've got like a gold, you've got a light gold, you've got kind of like a peach, and then you've got like an iridescent shade here. But today, what I wanna do is go ahead and go in with the light gold shade. So I'm gonna go in with the light gold shade. I am using this small tapered brush by e.l.f. Actually, I think I'm gonna go into this peach shade instead of the light gold. I wanted to do the light gold, but I wanna check this peach shade out. This peach shade that I put on isn't real peachy. It's more of a very light peach tone, but really pretty on the skin. But I'm gonna go ahead and swatch the other ones for you so you guys can see. I'll swatch the peach one too. But this is the one I have on now, and these are the other shades here. They're pretty creamy. The one that I thought was iridescent seems to be more of like a pink shade, like a light pink shade, so that should be really pretty on the skin. But these are definitely gold. This one's a darker gold, and this is a light gold. So I am gonna go in with the other Essence palette, the Sunlighter Reload, but I'm gonna go in with this after I put on blush. So let me show you what I got for blush. So for blush, I picked up three Essence blushes. These are new to the line. So I picked up Befitting, and then this one is Bespoke, and then this one is Blooming. Blooming looks really light, like it would not go on my skin tone. But I'm gonna try that one first because I wanna see how well it works. I'm gonna go with this Morphe R10 brush. Now, Blooming does have a little bit of pigment, but not much. Kind of a nude baby pink shade. Yeah, it's very baby pink. It shows up, but it looks too powdery pink on my skin tone. So I'm gonna go in with another blush. I'm gonna use the Bespoke blush. This one is more of like a nude brown. Really, really pretty. I'm using that same brush. Oh yeah, that one's gorgeous. Oh, that's so pretty. It's a very beautiful nude shade. Wow, that looks really pretty. I didn't show you Befitting, but I will swatch it for you. So that's Befitting. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the eyes. I'm using the Sonia G Pencil Pro. I'm going with that shade first, and then I'm gonna go into that shade. And then I'm gonna go into that next shade I showed you. Okay, that's it for the eyes. So now I wanna go into uh, lips. I don't have any new lip liners, but I'm gonna go in with the NYX Lip Liner in Natural. So I'm gonna go in with a new lipstick from Wet n Wild. I do have a few of these. Um, I have been liking these right here. These are the moisturizing ones, but there are some colors that I purchased that were just not as good as the ones that I ended up liking. So these are kind of a hit or miss. Some of them are really, really good and pigmented 
and they show on my lips and then some of them weren't so great. So anyway, I'm going in with Peach Please. It was just thunderstorming right now, and now the sun's peeking out. So weird. I'm going to put some of this MAC Fix Plus on, only because that CoverGirl powder kind of looked drying on my skin, so I want to kind of see if it'll just kind of meld together with the other makeup and look a lot better and less drying. Okay guys, now that that's dried, I'm gonna go ahead and take these clips out of my hair and I'll be right back. All right guys, I'm back. I did forget to use the Pure Nude Sunlighter Palette. So we're just gonna go in with it really quickly over my blush, only because I wanna check this palette out and see if it's something that I would really, really like for my skin tone. Um, the shades are absolutely beautiful in this palette. So I'm hoping that this actually works for me. I am gonna go back in with that Morphe R10 and then I'm going to place the lightest shade because I don't want to go too crazy. So I'm going to place this light peach shade and I'm going to put this on my cheeks because I already have a lot on. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Yeah, this is gorgeous. I think these two shades are going to be great as blush. Now these are also highlighting shades and I will swatch every single one of them for you guys. So you will see like their pigmentation and actually they don't come off as dark as they look in the pan. But these are the shades here and they're a lot more on the warm peachy tone than the other palette which was like golds and light peach and a light pink. This is gonna be perfect for like those of us who want that bronze skin highlighted look. This is the palette that you wanna go for. So that is the Sunlighter. Yeah, this is the Sunlighter Reload Palette. Beautiful, beautiful shades. I am excited to use more of those. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into my thoughts of these products. I didn't have a new primer. I did not have a new foundation. But I did have the Revolution Conceal and Fix. And I will say that I don't like it underneath my foundation, but I absolutely love it on top of my foundation. It has like this really brightening effect. You can barely see like my hyperpigmentation, which I love because I'm always trying to find something that could help cover that up. And I know that it's super hard to cover up hyperpigmentation. So I don't really like get my hopes up with you know, other products or with full coverage products because I know that if I use a product that's gonna cover it up, it's not gonna be 100%. I wish there was something out there that was 100%, but there's not. But because this covered it up so well and made it look so brightening and smooth, I am absolutely impressed with it. So I'm gonna continue to use this. I'm just gonna keep using it on the outside of my foundation. Now, like I said, I don't know if it's gonna break up later. I don't know what it's gonna do, but for first impressions, it looks really good. And I'm just gonna have to see and test it out to see if it's gonna have some breakup or to see if it's gonna kind of like fall apart in some way. So anyway, it is new to the Makeup Revolution line. All the products will be listed down below. This was probably, I wanna say this was probably $10. Might have been a little bit more, but it wasn't a bad deal. For the Big Ego Brow, I will say that I do love the way this brow pomade went on. I think it went on very creamy, very smooth, but not so creamy where I didn't have like control of the product. It distributed nicely. I think it looks really nice on the eyebrows, and I do really like the shade of it. I don't think the shade is too dark at all for my eyebrows. So, so far, this is a great product. I really love the application of it. And yeah, I'm gonna continue to use that as well. So for the Essence blushes, the only one that I think that I will not use is the Blooming Blush because it's way too light and it looks chalky on my skin. The other two I know I will be using, especially the Bespoke. I think the Bespoke is just like this perfect nude shade that can go with any eye look. I think it went on really nice and pigmented. I do feel like it blended well and that it doesn't distribute so much color that you can't work with it. You know, sometimes blushes are so pigmented, like my NARS Arouse blush. They're so pigmented that you really can't work with them. You know, you have to be very light-handed, very careful, 
Not to say that they're not blendable, but it is harder when they're super pigmented and they just come off so strong on the cheeks. So these did very well. I really love the shade Bespoke. And this one I think is just gonna be just as pretty on the skin as well. So for the Tarte BU palette, I didn't have any problems with the shades, guys. I went on with those shimmer shades and the matte shades and everything just kind of laid really nicely on the eyelid. I did have just a tiny bit of fallout on the edges from putting that matte brown shadow on the edge, but it was easy to clean up with a wipe. And normally what I do is I do my foundation after I do my eyeshadow so I don't have issues with fallout. But other than that, I really like the smoky eye look that I came up with. And I'm interested in seeing how these other shades work, the more cranberry shades. I think those shades are just gorgeous in this palette and yeah, I'm going to be using those here very soon. Um, I think this one was either, I want to say it was like $20, maybe a little over $20. But yeah, this was a really good buy for all these shades and for the payoff from these shades in the palette. So really good palette. I will be enjoying that a lot. So for the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance, like I said, when I put this on initially, it looked very drying on my skin. I looked in my magnifying mirror, which guys, it's really hard when I look in this magnifying mirror. Sometimes I hate this thing because it shows like every little flaw in my skin. Now, I love it for other things, you know, when I'm plucking my eyebrows or when I'm needing to be a bit more precise on my eyebrows. So I love it for other things, but I hate looking at my face once I put makeup on and seeing how my pores are looking because people don't have that magnifying look when they're looking at you outside, you know, in the real world. They look at you in your face just like I'm looking at myself now in the mirror. So by looking at myself like in a regular mirror, I love, love, love the highlighting that it gives. And it doesn't look cakey, it doesn't look drying, it looks beautiful and it looks very radiant under my eyes which I absolutely am in love with because, you know, normally when you put like powder down, it can look a little like flat, but this just adds that radiance to the skin, to my forehead, my nose, everywhere where I put it. It just looks really beautiful. So I can see why Tati loves this powder so much because it really does give that radiant look, but just in those areas where you want, you know, that brightening effect. It just looks so like radiant and smooth and just really, really pretty. So this is a winner for me. Um, I will see how this does throughout the day, but so far for first impressions, this is a good one. So I really like this flower brush. I did love it for that bronzer. I think that it went into that cheekbone area really nicely. And then when I blended everything together, it blended beautifully. It's a very soft brush. I think I purchased this one at Walmart and it worked really well. So I really like this. And then the other brush that I used, the one that I got for two bucks at Five Below, this is pretty good. I'm gonna keep using this for the Correct and Fix Pot. I just like the way that it put the product on my skin. It didn't feel like it was streaky or anything like that. It just kind of patted in really nicely. So for two bucks, can't beat that. So for the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder Palette, I absolutely love the shades in this palette. I think the two top shades are gonna be beautiful on deeper skin tones. And these bottom two shades are gonna be great for light medium to medium skin tones. This was really good. It blended so nicely. I used these two shades here, one to kind of contour bronze, the other one to kind of mix it all up. I used this darker shade here just for my chin area. I don't know that I can use this one um, for my cheek area. I am gonna try it though, but I did wanna be safe today because I do have to go out here in a little bit. So I just went in with these two shades and then that one on my chin. So I really liked it. It blended beautifully. It looks really nice on the skin. So I'm really impressed with it. For the Pure Nude Sun Lighter and Highlighter Palette, both palettes are super good. If you guys like their Pure Nude highlighters that are in the singles, you're gonna like these as well. The formulation is the same. It goes on so creamy and so beautiful on the skin 
doesn't sit on top of the skin so it doesn't look chalky. It has a really smoothing effect. It didn't accentuate like any texture or it didn't make my skin look dry or anything like that. So yeah, I really love both of these palettes. I'm gonna keep both of these because this one I could use for all over highlighting. This one I can use for highlighting and for blush. These shades right here are a lot lighter than what they seem in the pan. These also are a lot lighter. This one is a little bit darker than all of them. This one is more like a blush or a blush topper. But I used this one as a blush topper today and I think it came out really pretty. So yeah, so I really like these. Um, I think these were such a great buy. So those actually worked out perfect. Okay guys, that pretty much covers all of my first impressions. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so at the end of this video. Also hit that notification bell so you'll know when I come out with new ones. And I want y'all to know that I'm so happy that you guys are here and that you joined me today. And I want you guys to have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.